So a couple of quick stories. Um, Houthis declare war on Israel, but their real target is elsewhere. Um, it says the cruise missiles won't hurt Israel much, but they complicate regional diplomacy, especially for Saudi Arabia. They've actually killed four Saudi soldiers. Houthis, um, they're not fucking around, so, looks like they're gonna jump in it, right, so, it looks like this war is expanding, and also you have this story out, the Algerian parliament unanimously, unanimously votes to support Palestine militarily, right, so, Algerian parliament on November 2nd unanimously voted authorized the president to enter the Gaza's real war through his support behind Palestine. A hundred out of a hundred. Right? It came a day after the anniversary of Algeria's war of liberation against the French colonials. Right? So, yeah, I, I got a bad feeling about this. I think it's just going to continue to expand. Um, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna continue to expand. Um, what does, you know? And then you had a speech by the Lebanese uh, militia leader Nasrallah, and you know, at some point, I mean, I, it se they seem. I mean, it, there's a little tit for tat right now with strikes going back and forth between them and Israel. Um, at some point, it's gonna intensify, right? And I guess Algeria and Yemen don't mean much, but when collectively you look at it, it means a lot, like, because if they decide, I mean, to send soldiers, you know, like, this shit will never stop. You know what I mean? Like, if they continue to watch them ethnically cleanse these people, it's just gonna get worse and worse, right? And you're gonna have like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Arabs and Muslims, you know, all across the globe pissed off, right? And eventually, they, you know, they're gonna find their way to get involved. They're gonna find a way to get involved, right? Against not just Israel, but the Amer any Americans that they they find in the Middle East in that area, they gonna get at them. You know what I mean? So it ain't just them; it's everybody that support Israel. That's why the Yemen Yemenis are bombing the Saudis. Why? Because there's a American base in Saudi Arabia. That's why Yemen is bombing and killing Saudi soldiers. All right? The embassies military installment uh, and bases and you know uh, uh, everything ships they got ships over there they put, they brought all those ships over there that was in, that's stupid they sit in ducks <laughs> right he said America's too powerful to fall wait a wait a wait a minute you just brought a bunch of fucking ships in the middle basically of a bunch of Arabs who don't like you? Are you fucking crazy? And then you just piss them all off where they're all shooting missiles? You don't have enough missile defense. You can't shoot everybody. You can't shoot Algeria, Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, um, Tunisia, uh, on and on, right? I can name a few more. Throw, you know, throw a few more in there. You can't shoot shoot all of them at the same time. I mean, you can try to go to war with all of them. You know what I mean? But it's it's madness. Like the casualties is gonna be immense. They're gonna, you know, if all of them decide to join the war, right? And you just got all of these different groups: Pakistan, right? Afghanistan, right? All of them you know, engaging in 
negative activity toward U.S. installations and Israelis. Not to mention you got Muslims in India. Right? Malaysia. All these places. And they decide, like, you know, it's open season on motherfuckers. That's going to get crazy real fast. Right? That'll be crazy real quick. And then particularly look at that Mediterranean area. Right? You can't fight. There's no. I, I, I forgot to mention Iran. Right? But you can't fight all of those people at the same time. They're going to get overwhelmed. It's like a, a zombie apocalypse. Right? You're just going to get overwhelmed by sheer numbers. Right? It doesn't matter. You said, well, I got advanced weapons. I mean, there's a lot of people there. I mean, just think about it. People like Hezbollah got 150,000 missiles. I don't give a fuck how much missile defense you got on those ships. If they decide to shoot like a thousand rockets at one of those ships, right? That shit is going down to the bottom of the ocean. Right? They'll sink all that shit. If if you got five or six countries shooting rockets at ships, they ain't got enough missiles on the ships to 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 maintain, right? So eventually they'll start hitting it. And you know, some of those rockets some of those guys got could probably sink some of those ships. It's happened before, right? I think Lebanon, matter of fact, the Lebanese killed maybe two hundred and fifty uh, American soldiers one time a lot of people you know they got short memories but I remember that matter of fact I think it was on the ship or something some way around you know something happened and they hit it and they killed like 250 American soldiers in the clip the Americans didn't uh, the Americans left after that they just rolled out packed shit up and left and that's what's gonna happen this time they're gonna it's gonna be a repeat because you can't attack everybody in the Middle East, right? It's just going to be too many people hitting from too many sides once they all get in, right? Well, you got Yemen, Tunisia, Lebanon, Palestine, the shit, you know, Egypt. What if the Saudis flip, right? Morocco, all kinds of places. And, you know, it, it's going to be overwhelming. It, it's going to overwhelm them in the Middle East. Just sheer numbers, you know, when you got, you know, 300, 400, 500, 600,000. You know, you got 600,000, you know, let's say soldiers running around. All trying to take your asses out. It's like, damn, you really want that? Like, that's insane. You got hundreds of thousands of people just running around. You can't get them all. You know, it's like whack-a-mole. They pop up one place, you smack them down, they pop up another. You got hundreds of thousands of people running around. You know what? Here's a here's a here's something. I'm, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna go though, right? Here's an interesting point. They compare Hezbollah to ISIS. Oh, really? Interesting. Here's a, here's a tidbit, right? They say ISIS is this so-called, you know, anti, um, whatever, right? They anti uh, Western, you know, they want the Islamic fundamentalists, anti this, anti that. How come they never attacked Israel? You ever ask yourself that? All the ISIS stories for the past 20 years, right? The Al Qaeda, ISIS. You know, name, you know, whatever name they, you know, they give them for the, this month. You ever ask yourself how come ISIS never attacked Israel? If they so anti this, anti that, right? If ISIS hates, you know, America, Jews, whatever, these, you know, their allies, different people, right? How come ISIS only attacks, um, other Muslims and Arabs. I thought that was interesting when I thought about it. I was like, huh. I've never seen them attack, you know, like like Hamas, 
you know, attack the Israelis. Okay, that made sense to me. You know, I mean, you know, it's kind of like, okay. People got you in the concentration camp, stole your land, killed your parents, grandparents and shit. I, I can dig it, right? Okay. That conflict kicks off. And then you look at it, and then the Israelis bring up ISIS. ISIS this, Hamas is ISIS, Hamas are Nazis. You know, you start making all these weird comparisons that don't compute. And when they said, you know, Hamas is not, um, I'm sorry, Hamas is, uh, you know, like ISIS and Al-Qaeda, I started thinking to myself, how come they never attacked you? How come there were never any attacks, right? Like, so-called Al-Qaeda, they wanted to get at motherfuckers, right? The, but they went all the way to New York on 9-11. When they could have just went to Israel? Really? They went all the way to so-called New York or D.C. or whatever. How come they ain't never go to Israel? It's right there. It, you know what I mean? There's plenty of American bases in the Middle East. If they was looking for Americans and, you know, American allies. How come they, you know, don't just, well, how come they never attack any of them? Any of these, you know, any of these Israelis? Not saying, I'm not saying they should or shouldn't. I'm just saying, how come they don't? It's kind of weird, don't you think? You don't think it's kind of weird they never attacked them? But then they said, well, Hamas is like is, is, is like ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Really? Hamas is like ISIS and Al-Qaeda. That's a good, it's interesting you brought that up, Mr. Israeli man. How come they never attacked you? in, you know, 20 years. Hmm. I know why. I know why. There was a, matter of fact, there was a story that came out. Let me see if I can find it. Stand by. Here's an interesting story I saw a long time ago. Right? Exclusive. Israel is tending to wounded Syrian rebels. Oh, really? Wounded Syrian rebels? Israel is quietly cultivating ties with moderate terrorists. <laughs> moderate terrorists. Moderate Syrian rebel groups operating along the country's UN monitored ceasefire with Syria, providing medic medical care and other unidentified supplies to the insurgents while potentially extracting intelligence on the act activities of uh, the president of Syria as well as extremist opposition forces within Syria Israel is quietly cultivating ties with moderate terrorists <laughs> a moderate terrorist a moderate Syrian rebel group operating along the country's human monitor ceasefire hmm. scores of wounded Right across the line, separated Israel from Syria. Right. Once in Israel, these these groups receive medical treatment and field clinics before being sent back to Syria, where they will continue to fight. Huh. Right? Very helpful, these damn Israelis. Right? Very helpful they are. Throughout that reporting period, the UN frequently observed armed members of the opposition interacting with the Israeli Defense Forces across the ceasefire line. According to the report, on one occasion, UN observed the IDF on the Alpha side inside Israel handing two boxes to armed opposition on the Bravo side inside of Syria. UN officials worry that rising instability in the ceasefire zone could ultimately threaten the uneasy peace. I'll stop there. So we see 
from this report that the Israelis, huh? Now, who are these people that they're talking about? These moderate terrorists. Well, that would be they would these people would be labeled affiliated with Al Qaeda, ISIS, Al Nusra Front, all these uh, different uh, so-called like Al Qaeda affiliates. Story's been around for a while, right? It's kind of curious. So, so that's why that's why um, Al Qaeda, ISIS never attacked Israel, right? Because you can hang out in the Israeli hospital. Well, why would I attack you, <laughs> right? If I if, you, if I could get some boxes of weapons from you, right? And and you, if I get hurt, I could go to your hospitals get treated, have some lunch, right? Stuff like that, you know, hang out for about a month, recuperate, and go back to, you know, fighting, right? Then, um, yeah, why would I attack you, right? Strange bedfellows, right? Strange bedfellows, Syrian rebels. <laughs> So, I mean, I just thought that was an interesting story when I saw it. Yeah, I mean, this is years old, years and years ago, right? And now, so they go from, and then they say, well, Hamas is like ISIS. Well, you would know. I mean, they, you get friends with some of these ISIS people and these Al-Qaeda people. You, they, like, you treat them, and you let them come to your hospitals, and, you know, y'all hang out, you give them weapons and food and you know, medical support. They got, they get better medical care than niggers in the United States, <laughs> right? So, you would know, right, that you said Hamas is just like ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Oh, really? I guess you would know, since they're some of your best friends, right? So, but, um, you know, it's interesting you know, they, they're making these wild, weird statements while pounding, you know, 5,000 children to death. <laughs> you know what I mean? Women and unarmed babies and children to death. And you say, well, ISIS, uh, uh, Hamas are terrorists. They're just like ISIS and Al-Qaeda. They're Nazis. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, I got a bad feeling about all of this. You know, especially when you see, um, you know, when you see all these groups getting in, the Houthis, right? They're coming in, right? The Houthis, they want some. You want some Houthi? And then you see, you know, but it's kind of biblical, right? I'm going I'm to I'm wrap this up. Algerians getting in, right? I'm going to wrap this up with a, pro, with a prophecy. Joel 3 and 2, he says, I will gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will plead with them, with them for my people, for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted the land. When he said that, um, well, we know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to do this really quickly. We know he's not talking about the, the, the people that formed the state of Israel in 1948, the white people from Europe. We know that because they're all there in Europe. So this, this prophecy debunks the theory that these people are so-called God's chosen people. It debunks it. Joel 3 and 2 debunks that whole thing. Right? It said that the real uh, Jews, the real uh, tribes of Israel will be scattered across the whole earth when the when Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Lord of hosts, when he comes, they will be scattered. They wouldn't be in the state of Israel. He said they will be places where the land has been parted. You see? They would be on reservations. They would be living under Jim Crow. They would be living under slavery. They would be in uh, occupation, right? They would be living in the Gaza Strip. They would be living in uh, uh, places where the land had been parted in the 50 places like the United States. They would be living in Colombia and in Brazil in ghettos and favelas and in barrios, right? That's where the, the real heritage, his heritage would be found not in the state of Israel, right? They would be scattered among all nations, right? Where the 
land had been parted. You see? But he said, I will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. What is, where is Jehoshaphat? Jehoshaphat is a small town outside of Jerusalem, I believe, right? And he said, I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage. Now, when he said plead, is he talking about like, we shall overcome? You know, that kind of plea, like, hey, please stop bombing Gaza. Hey, please, somebody help us. No, I'll show you what he means when he says plead. I'll, show you, I'll finish this off with this prophecy. So this is what he meant when he said plead. So this is a reference to Joel 3 and 2. He says in Isaiah 66 and 16, For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Mm. You see? So he's not going to be like, hey, please, can you? Can you stop bombing these children in, in Gaza? Hey, can you please pay reparations? Hey, can you please, you know, give me civil rights? Hey, can you, you know, so, you know, like begging, like marching and begging. He says, for by fire and with his sword, will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. So he said, I'm going to bring them down into the, the valley of Jehoshaphat. You see? And with my sword, I'm going to plead with their flesh, and I shall slay them, and, they, and the slain shall be many. Right? You see? The Lord, the Lord is Thanos. The Lord of hosts is Thanos. The character Thanos. Or Apocalypse. Right? Or one of these other characters. He's, that's the, 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 the true archetype for, for the Lord of hosts. You see? He's going to, if this is true, he's going to kill billions of people, right? He's going to kill billions and judge and kill billions of people, right? I mean, why? Cause, I mean, it's not me saying it. Obviously, this is what he's saying. He said, for by fire and by the sword, well, well the Lord of hosts, this is Isaiah, the prophecy, right, of the end times shall plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many will you be many other, will you be one of the many because that's going to be soon taking place soon right so the question is will you or, you know, which, which, which side of this do you fall on see but people say well that could never happen right they don't believe in the Bible they say I mean that's a bunch of bullshit I don't got to worry about that I would never be slain by the Lord right they said Jesus saves Jesus saves, right? They got signs everywhere. Jesus saves, the Lord loves you. Well, if Jesus saves and the Lord loves you, right? But it says the slain of the Lord shall be many. Who's lying? Somebody's lying, man. Who should I believe, right? Somebody's lying about what's going on, what's going to happen soon, right? So, is Jesus going to save you or are you going to be slain by Jesus? Right? Which one is it? Right? So, there's the dilemma, right? There's the paradox. Right? But, we're seeing prophecy unfold because he said, I'm going to draw them into Jehoshaphat. See? They're going to be drawn all toward everybody's being drawn in toward the Middle East for this war right it pivoted from Ukraine to the Middle East and people don't know prophecy they think they do they don't know the prophecies the biblical prophecies but they think they do right and so now you, you're seeing these people being drawn drawn in and as they get drawn in you get closer to, right, to this timeline, right, of things happening. And so, um, once they get drawn in, in the wars, then, you know, the, then the appearance of, of the Lord of hosts. See, people said, I'm going to say this and I'm going to go, I didn't want to make this too long, but people say that 
they talk about the Antichrist or whatever. You have no idea. The Antichrist has been on Earth and been running his show for a very long time. Right? The pyramids are a sign of that. You see, and the pyramids are probably at least 10,000 years old. So the Antichrist has been here for a very long time. Right? All of, everything going on is a part of the beast system and part of what the Antichrist have put in, has put in place over hundreds, if not thousands of years. So the Antichrist and his coalition Right? It's the synagogue of Satan which runs Israel. You see? So all of that is already taking place. The only thing left now is salvation. We people have to be saved from them. Right? Who can save the Palestinian Christian from the synagogue of Satan? Right? Who can save you know, the Negro running down the street in America, right? From the Nazis in America, right? Who can save, you know, the, the you know, people in the favelas and, you know, all the barrios and, you know, Colombia and Brazil and in Mexico and in Guatemala, right? And in Cuba and then Dominican Republic, right, and everywhere in Africa. Who, who can save these people from these people, right? You see? People have to be saved from them. So, they have to be saved from the Antichrist and his, and his coalition, right? The Bible says the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. You see, that means the Antichrist is already here and has taken over the earth a long time ago and has, is in charge. You see, who but the Antichrist would slaughter babies in churches? You see, I mean, it's not that complicated, is it? It is if you're stupid, you see. And and so people have to be saved from this, right? It says in the Bible, I'm going to say this. I'm, one more. I'm going to do one more. Matthew 24 and 22. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened, you see. What does that mean? He's, if If... Nobody in Gaza can be saved, you see, unless the Lord, from the Antichrist. The, they said the Antichrist is coming. Well, that doesn't make sense. That would be against every, every prophecy of the Bible. Salvation is an event where you get saved from these people. See, the people in Gaza have to be saved. Their days have to be shortened on the earth. You can't make America greater again because then Matthew 24 and 22 wouldn't come true, you see. The days of America have to be shortened. The days of Israel have to be shortened. The days of, you know, fill in the blanks of the Nazis and the Satanists and the adherence to the synagogue of Satan and the people that worship the devil and that pray at the altar of the Antichrist, right, and do his work and his bidding has to be shortened, right? Or no flesh could be saved. Why? Because they'll kill you and replace you with robots or something. You see? That's why, right? He said, except that those days shall be shortened, that no flesh will be saved, right? They will ethnically, if their days is not shortened, they'll wipe out, right? People that have been in Palestine for 2,000 years since the time of the so-called um, man who was mistakenly called a Messiah and mistakenly called Jesus Christ, right? They'll wipe them out right in front of you on your TV while you eat your TV dinner and your GMO food, right? If if he don't come and save them, Joe Biden can't save them. Joe Biden went there and said, ceasefire. They told Joe Biden, fuck off, Joe Biden. We run your elections in the United States. 
People talking about Russia, Russia, Russia tainted the elections. Give me a break. The only people running the elections in the United States is the is, is the Jews and Israels, Israelis. Everybody, every anybody with sense knows that. Only a dumbass would be screaming Russia rigged the U.S. elections. You have to be the dumb. When you say something like that around me, I know that you're one of the dumbest motherfuckers that's probably walking the planet. Right? And I can ignore you in anything you say. You have no credibility. Right? So, not to make this too long. But, but so in Matthew 22, 24 and 22, he says, And those days shall be shortened, therefore no flesh could be saved. Right, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. You see. See, in some people, the Lord of Hosts said, "I see something in them." Right. I can work with. I can work with him. I can work with her. You know what I mean? They not totally lost, so they are elected to be saved. I can work with them. I know their. I can see something in their spirit. I won't destroy them. Right. There's something good about them, not perfect, but there's something in them that I can use. You see? Something above reproach. You see, something honorable deep in their spirit. Even though they've been tainted by this nasty, filthy place. Right? And so they they are elected to be saved, you see. And the only way he had to shorten their days, America can't be made great again. Israel can't be allowed to ex exist and go on, right? Not because I said it, but because Matthew 24 and 22 said it. Because if, 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 if the, if the, if the synagogue of Satan is allowed to exist, as it says in 24 and 22 of Matthew, they will wipe out humanity. You see, no flesh would be saved on the earth. So what he's telling you is, these people would ethnically cleanse the earth at a certain level. What they're doing in Palestine and Gaza, what they've done to the American Indians and the people in South Africa and the people in South America, right? They would continue across the planet and continue doing doing these evil deeds, you know, uh, for the Antichrist until he manifests a plan where he would start to destroy all flesh and kill all the people, right? Artificial intelligence. Maybe he'd bring in, you know, cyborgs and robots or whatever, right? He said no flesh, who knows, you know, the extent of what he's saying when he says no flesh could be saved, right? If he didn't step in, right? If he didn't step in, like it says in the book of Joel, then in Matthew where it ties in, no flesh would be saved from these people. Nobody can stop them once they get started. And they've been started for a long time, right? What do you think happened to the American Indians, right? Why do you think all these people in South America look so white? Where there used to be, you know, very brown, dark-skinned Indian people. No flesh could be saved from them. Because they rape and pillage everything, right? And the next phase is just wipe out humanity. See, that's what Matthew 24, 22 is saying. That, um, you know, they may continue now. It's not, they don't want to just have, you know, turn you into sex slaves and, you know, plantation workers. Well, fuck it. We got technology now. We don't need that. We'll make robots. So at this point, we don't need your flesh, Right? So that's what he says when he when he means when he says no flesh shall be saved. Right? If he don't step in, right, there will there won't be any Semitic bloodlines left in certain places. Why? Because it'll wipe them out. You see? People think you think you you think I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna go for real for real. But you, because I don't want to make this really, really long. But you think that there is an end game with them. See, this is, you think they're like you. You say, well, these people are like me. Really? Really? You think that they're like you, right? They're not like you. 
that's where you, you fuck up. You see? Like, you think an alien is like you because it walks on, it's humanoid. Just because it's humanoid doesn't mean it's like you. It may want to eat you. Right? Or something. It may see you as inferior. Right? Like you look at a, a dog or a chimpanzee. Slightly inferior. Alive, but not on your level. Subhuman, as they say, right? That's what nigger means. Just FYI. Right? And so, you, th you think they like you, so therefore, you think that there's an end game with them where they will stop. Right? And then all of a sudden, you're going to grab hands and skip off into a utopia together. Right? That's what you think. You're looking at these people, you know, at the blink of an eye, massacre, right? Enslaved, basically, in modern times, and then massacre 10,000 people, you know, pretty much the majority of unarmed people and babies and women in front of your face and disintegrate churches in front of your face, right? And that's what you think? That's the end game? Utopia? You're going to have a utopia with these people, right? No. Like I said in Matthew 24 and 22, he said, and except that those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. He's gonna, he has to save you from them, right? If you are elected to be saved, if you are, right? His heritage, as he says in the, chat, in the chapter before I showed you this, right? If he don't save you from them, then your flesh wouldn't be saved. What does that mean? They're going to get rid of you. That there's a secret plan, right? There's a secret plan, right? Obviously, there's no use for you. And except that those days be shortened, your flesh would not be saved and that, that of you and your, your heritage, right? If I didn't stop them, I have to stop them. That's what he's saying in Matthew 22. I have to stop them because if I don't, they're going to do something fucked up, right? And nobody can be saved from that, what they're going to do. I mean, and then you say, well, that doesn't make sense. Okay, let me give you a quick example before I go. During the transatlantic slave trade, these people killed 100 million people, right? 100 million slaves just to build a colony of slaves, right, in the, America, in the 13 colonies. They killed 100 million And then they killed 77 million Indians. And except that those days be shortened, there could no flesh be saved. You understand? That ain't that long ago. I'm just saying. That, that's, I mean, watching what these people are doing right now, grinding up, you know, babies in churches, <laughs> right? You think you special? I'm just saying, you think you special? Where's the UN? The UN can't stop them. Nobody can stop them, right? The Americans, nobody. You got people cheering. <laughs> Give them 15 billion. Give them some more weapons to grind up babies. Right? Nobody can, you know what I mean? So, when you... When you say, well, that's out of the question or certain things are not possible, certain things have already happened. So are you out of touch with reality is the question? Or are you a fool? Which one is it? Right? Because these things have already taken place. So that if they've already taken place and there's a precedent for it, meaning it's nothing for it to happen again, you're watching it happen right now. You see? So, I'm a rap, but when you, so when you read these things, it doesn't, it, it shouldn't ring like, oh, this is ridiculous. This is a fairy tale. Well, maybe you're just stupid and unrealistic and you live in la-la land. Because a lot of the things have already happened. Right? You said an antichrist is coming. Antichrist has been here for a long time. The antichrist is the reason why they ground up 100 million people to build a slave colony and why they ground up 77 million Indians into the dust, right? And ravaged.
savage South America and Af Africa and, you know, and every fucking el where else on the planet. What do you think, that's a coincidence? Are you that fucking dumb? Right? You think it's just a coincidence? These things are coincidences? Everything is connected. Right? I'm I'm gone this time, but but everything is connected and people need to realize that. So in Matthew twenty four and twenty two, when he says and except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, that's a prophecy where he's warning you that if he didn't come back and he didn't the the act of salvation did not occur then you all would end up like Gaza in a very short time in the near future. That's all I got.